Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Whiteville, North Carolina, visiting Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, and I'm checking out a 2018, now this is the new model, Jeep Wrangler, the JL. Completely redesigned Jeep Wrangler. Now this is the unlimited four-door in the Rubicon trim level, so this one has a lot of features to show off. So let's go ahead and get started. This Wrangler is sitting on 285.70 all-terrain BF Goodrich tires wrapped around 17-inch alloy wheels with a combination of black and gray and a matte finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors in the front and solid disc rotors in the back. The name of this color is Firecracker Red. And it's kind of a rainy, gloomy day today, but even so, the firecracker red really pops out and it's the brighter looking red. It's really nice, especially on a Wrangler. I mean, that's just a uh, iconic color for me anyway. Okay, so looking at the front, you can see it has that bumper cover here with the red tow hooks popping through the top. LED fog lights and a reflector housing. Then you have that seven slot grill that the Jeep is known for with the round headlights. Now you notice the headlights are, seem to be a little bit bigger. This right here, this portion kind of pushes over a little bit into that, the end slots there. Now the headlights are powered by LEDs in a projector and a reflector housing. So you have the projector beams and uh, for your low beams and then you have a combination of projector and reflector for your high beams. I like the way they have the little, little touch here with the Jeep name and it says performance LED. It's just really looks pretty cool and then of course you have the halos around the headlights as well now it also has the led lights on the fender wells which is something that's new and also your turn signals will be there as well so the jeep key fob is completely different this year it's a little bit bigger and uh it's a proximity system for the the rem has remote start but it also has the push button start and it has the physical key that flips out which is pretty cool. Has the lock and unlock remote start panic button here. So let's go ahead and push the panic button. So it flashes the lights and has a really strong horn. Remote start, you just double tap that and it'll start up. And of course the lock and unlock button's there. But man, this is a really tough feeling key and it has some pretty good size and weight to it as well. So looking at the profile of the Jeep, uh, there's a couple things that stand out. One is you have this little fake vent right in here. The shape of the fenders, the contour of the fenders are slightly different. This one has the rock rail across the side and the handles are different. So you don't have to have a little button there to push. You just grab the handle and pull it. Just a really neat looking Jeep. I think they did a great job the Rubicon, wow, I mean, it has the, uh, you know, the special hood, and you can't really see it from the direct profile. I guess a little bit you can. The, the taillights kind of protrude on the side, and then you have a little bit of a spoiler there, or just a little bit of a bump there on the back of the hard top. Okay, so let's look at the passenger side door. Handle, you just pull it out, there's no button anymore. You also have a door stopper so as you pull the door out you can pull it out to a certain point let go of it snaps back you go out right there it'll stop go a little bit further out it stops right there that's the furthest position that it goes out now you know previous model wranglers that didn't have that door stop it's just the door would just swing you know freely on the hinges so that's pretty neat looking at the inside of the door you have a soft touch surface up here 
all the way down, including your armrest. Then the contrast stitching in a French design. Then the, your handle is right here. Now the handle has this little pattern on it, which is throughout the vehicle, and I'll try to point it out every time I see it. So it has this certain type of pattern. I'm not sure what the name of it is. Then you have that net pocket at the very bottom. And this portion here is kind of, it's kind of opened out. I'm not sure exactly what the reason for it. It doesn't go in anywhere. It's just maybe for, just for styling. But down in this area is the, the hard plastics. And then above this area is the soft touch surfaces. There's your threshold. Leather trim seats with the contrast stitching. These are heated seat but seats, by the way. And it has the Rubicon name embroidered in the back. Has a handle on all four doors to get in the vehicle, so even on the driver's side. Then you have that iconic handle here. Now it's a rubber rubberized grippy surface so it has a texturing and it's rubberized it's really nice and check out that red dashboard it's like a matte finish it just looks really really good there's the floorboard the floor mats snap in place like previous years locking glove compartment and it has the little torx kit in a black little black container now this is helps allows you to um you know take the doors off and all that stuff seems like the glove compartment might be slightly smaller this year I'm not sure maybe it's about the same Here's the inside of the back door, and the back door does have the, uh, the door stopper, so it doesn't swing. Soft touch surfaces, just like the front, all the way down to this point, and you have a soft tough touch armrest. And you have this pocket here with that same uh, pattern on the inside, and this little open spot here at the bottom. They do not connect though, so hadn't figured that one out yet. Then you have the net pocket at the bottom handles to get in and check out the back of the front seats you have the net pockets here but you also have this webbing something to tie to so if you want to attach something to the back of the seat i think for the most part it's just for looks but uh it's pretty awesome i forget the name of that webbing it looks similar to the type of web webbing that uh military and stuff use but i forget the exact name i actually have some and then you have these little uh holders here bag holders that you can hang something off of uh either side there and even with the seats all the way back, so the front seats are all the way back, but they still have a plenty of room here. Very little hump in the center. Little storage pads here with that same pattern. Little space here to prop up a phone, a AC adapter, USB ports here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So you have, not only do you have two large ones for charging you have two small ones and then your power window controls for your rear windows are right here so the bench seat back here has a center portion that folds down and you can put uh you know cup has a cup holder place to put a cell phone or whatever there on the center portion same thing here and the headrest uh, is for the center passenger and then th this lifts up and you can it snaps in place and secure it's not going to flop down on you when you pull this it, unre it releases it so it can fold down you also have a button up here for folding it down as well it does have the latch system for car seats The roll cage, you can't really tell right this second. Yeah, I guess you can. Right here is the body color. So the outside of the roll cage is body colored. Uh, so in this particular case, it's red. So when you take the tops off, you have a red roll cage. 
On the inside though, it's black, so that way it doesn't distract you, I guess. You have two speakers in each one of these grills in the roll cage, and there's your dome light. You have a dome light back there as well. And the inside of the top, now this one has the the headliner for the top, so it kind of keeps the echoes and noise down from the outside. But the inside has that, inside of the uh, actual top has that pattern that I've been pointing out on that as well. Okay, so folding these seats down, it's just like previous years. Um, when you pull that, the headrest folds by itself and then it kind of goes down like so and lowers its position all the way to the floor. So that way it gives you as close to a flat floor as possible. So you have these little flaps that fold down. So that way there is a slight difference in, in height between the cargo area and the seat, but it, it gives you a smooth transition. And you can fold down one seat or the other to add to your cargo space while still maintaining, as you can see, passenger space. Another thing I wanted to point out, that it seems like the seals are a little bit more robust and a little bit better designed for the top. Okay, so looking at the back of the vehicle, uh, the tail lights stick out a little bit here and they're LED powered. It's looking pretty cool. You even have an LED reverse light. There's your spare tire. This one has the towing package and I'll show you the window sticker at the end of the video showing you all the features this one has. Then you have the tow hook there, exhaust. I like the little Jeep on the wheels. And there's your backup camera right there in the very center position mounted on and locked onto the spare tire. Now the towing package has a four and seven way outlet. So you have four way and seven way. A little bit, a bit of a bump here. Sorry about the rain and the water. I just wanted to get this video, uh, get access to this vehicle as soon as possible. And also my time with it is very limited. So another handle that you don't have to push a button with, you just pull on it. Third brake light is mounted here, separate from the, the glass. And check it out, it says Jeep JL and it has two door, four door, for water fording, shows you the height and everything right there. It's pretty neat. And it shows trail ready. That's the privacy glass with the windshield wiper, windshield wiper washer, and the defroster in the rear glass as well. Okay, so here's your cargo area, and you can see the, uh, the, the, the roll cage a little bit better with the red, so it's body colored, looking pretty cool. Hopefully one day I'll get a chance to take the top off on one of these, or see one with the top off to show you. And this is a, uh, a bag to put the, the top, the T-tops into, and they mount on the back of these seats when they're up. So I'm going to kind of just slide that out of the way. Then you have some tie-downs. The power supply here. There's your subwoofer. It's the Alpine. I'll get the exact dimensions of the subwoofer and the power and the wattage and everything and, and leave that in the description. And among a, a bunch of other specs. This lifts up and then you have a storage compartment here. Now this is locking, so when this is closed, the tailgate covers this up a, a, a little bit of a portion. So when the tailgate's locked, this will be locked as well. So you have places to put your door hinge and roof screws or bolts. Uh, windshield bolts too, because the windshield is folding. And then we can open this up and lift this up and try to do it one-handed. 
and there's your uh, jack for your spare tire and tools and a little bit of storage space under there as well if you want to add some tools I guess this one hooks on this side you see right there it hooks and then you fold it down and snap it in place like so now this has a uh, like a soft rubber surface down here um, so you can take this out clean it put it back in it also has a plug uh, so you can drain water out of this just in case water puddles in this if you have the top off if you can see that that pattern if you know what that pattern is what it means or whatever it seems to be throughout this vehicle so uh, so it might be has some kind of significance that you might be able to let me know if you happen to know now a lot what I like about the hard top is that you can move this glass out of the way so like say a soft top you'd have to unzip this and uh, every time you want to access the cargo area more than just this portion so it's really easy to close back up like so so the hard top has a little bit of a gutter here on the side keeping water from pouring into the door when you open it up I guess when it's raining here's the fuel door and there's the fuel cap it has the cap with a little tether there and no place to hang it, so I guess it just suspends below as you're pumping gas. And it's on the driver's side, which is very convenient. On the driver's side, you have the trail rated badge. Four-wheel drive in red and gray, it looks like. And I like the way they have on the hinges. It actually has, um, it looks like T50 for the type of torques that you need to unscrew back under here. And it has like a little arrow. I like the way they added that so you know which tool to use now the Jeep Wrangler is available now with parking sensors in the back and a blind spot monitor detection system and rear cross traffic alert although it doesn't have the proximity key use on the handles it does have the push button start so as long as the keys inside the vehicle can be in your pocket in a bag or sitting in the cup holder like it is now you just put your foot on the brake and push this button And also I want to mention that that push button is a rubberized surface as well. So there's a lot of uh, rubber, rubberized surface material in this vehicle. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. And you can see the accelerator and brake pedal. And there, if you had a manual transmission, your, um, you would have your clutch pedal there, but it's not a lot of room as far as you know additional space if you add if you had a manual transmission because all the pedals would be in the way so we're going to take a look under the hood i just want to show you what the halo looks like and then the lights here led halo looking pretty cool so lifting the hood is just like previous years you just have these latches here but these are a little bit different um, they fold down like so and they don't hit the fenders like in previous years um, So what you do is you lower it like so and it kind of pushes this up And then you kind of push down on the hood and it unlatches and you just kind of move it like that So you will have to push down on the hood. It's not going to be easily lifted up and there's a little rubber surface in there So we just push it like so I guess I pushed it hard enough and that one's already unlatched or it unlatched but um, it's pretty neat. Yep. So this doesn't touch the fender at all. It looks like it does, but it's not. Okay, and then once we do that, this is kind of ready to go, except for this little latch in the center. So we're just going to reach in. I'm going to try to do it one-handed and push it to the right. So this right here. And then it requires a prop to hold it up. And the prop is actually on the underside of the hood and it swings down and goes right here okay so looking at the engine compartment looks a little bit different uh, this particular one does have the 3.6 liter v6 just like previous years Pentastar v6 it does have a different cover different looking cover but uh 
There's some similarities from previous years. I guess you want to keep what's good. Insulated battery. Does have an 8-speed automatic transmission instead of the 5-speed. And I noticed they, they open up the front here so you can, I guess partly, so you can access the uh, oil filter right there a little bit easier. Now you're also, pretty soon you'll have a four-cylinder turbo option and possibly the eco-diesel option. The inside of the driver's side door is very similar to the other side except for it has the uh, side mirror adjustments here. Powered side mirror adjustments. Heated side mirrors, by the way. Driver's seat has, in addition to the forward and back, the manual controls, has a height um, adjustment. This is your tilt, and then right here is for your um, lumbar adjustments. Now it's rubberized, everything, these are kind of, has this rubberized grip to them, it's pretty neat. Right in here is your headlight controls, you have off, parking light, headlights, and then automatic. Your dimmer switch for your interior gauges is here, but also you have a um, ambient light switch too. So right there, so you have a little bit of ambient light in the floorboard, which is nice. And then you have a very smooth tilt and telescoping steering column that locks in place. It's really easy to find that lever. It's not buried underneath the vehicle like some vehicles. Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three. Okay, so let's take a look on the inside, sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out. Really excited to show off this, this Jeep. This is just amazing. Okay, so I have the seat all the way back, and just to give you an idea of my, an idea of my leg room, I'm six feet tall, and uh, I probably would be fine with an, with an automatic transmission with it all the way back. Manual transmission, I may need to pull it up slightly, I have the seat slightly tilted back uh, just for filming, uh, but my knee room is good, leg room is good. Uh, I've always, even with the previous Wranglers, I think this might be an issue too with the manual transmission with the clutch pedal being right here. There's there's no extra room to put your foot. So you'd have to put your foot, rest your foot like this. There's no like foot rest or anything. Um, it's just completely open there. So uh, when you're not using the clutch, you would have to kind of do this number. So. That was a something I noticed in the previous Wranglers, and they can, you know, that's continuing with this one. Okay, so looking at the steering wheel, has the red stitching on the leather steering wheel, and it's like a smooth leather with no rough texturing or anything. But it is, it's not slick or anything like that. It is grippy, and it's soft to the touch as well. And the thickness is fantastic. It's pretty much the same thickness all the way around. And you have that smoked chrome around accenting it. Your cruise control is here on the right side. Your volume for your radio is here on the back, just like in previous years. And the with the center button um, cycling through your media source. On the left side on the back is up and down is changing through your audio tracks, your radio stations. And the center button is to cycle through your presets on your radio. So these arrows and that OK button corresponds with the screen between the gauges, which we'll get to in just a minute. You have the Bluetooth controls here with a voice recognition system, with which Uconnect has a very advanced voice recognition system. You can do change the radio station, you can make calls, um, you can control the climate control, you can go to certain destinations. Uh, you can do a lot of things with the voice recognition system. I highly recommend if you're into voice recognition, uh, learning how to use this one properly and using it for, to its full extent because it's kind of like a safety feature. It keeps your eyes on the road and you can use your voice uh, without taking your hands off the wheel. And then, you, of course, you can answer and hang up here with uh, the buttons as well. Windshield wiper controls are here on the right side for your front and rear and your turn signals here as well as your headlight dimmer switch. And check out these gauges and just kind of pull back a little bit. 
the red is kind of like a uh, like a matte red color looking really really nice here on the dash it just it just makes your environment with the just to take away from the um, all black of course the red contrast stitching helps but having that red there just I don't know it just looks so much better to me and then you have the red gauges here as far as little dials and the accents and the uh, of course the needles are in red and your RPMs are there on the left side speedometer is on the right and then the center portion is all digital it's a screen here and it has your outside temperature digital compass now these are customizable you can put different information there if you'd like but you also have a digital speedometer in the center your engine coolant temperature and your fuel gauge as well they're all displayed on the screen now using these buttons here I can scroll through and show you as I scroll down shows you this is part of a menu system so speedometer is number one going down uh, it goes into vehicle info that's number two now there's more screens going left and right right now it's showing the tire pressure scrolling to the right is your coolant temperature shows your different temperatures and pressures here battery voltage and then it goes back to your uh, your tire pressure I like the Jeep the, the little Jeep um, representation there that's so awesome all right scrolling down again uh, this is your drivetrain uh, so you have a sway bar disconnect so you can disconnect the sway bar in the front of the vehicle uh, when you're doing serious off-road you will have to be in a four-wheel drive low or four-wheel drive high to disconnect it but it's easy as pushing a button it's really neat gives you more articulation in the front wheels basically and then you have your pitch and roll um, as far as you know the tilt of the vehicle you know both ways gives you a percentage and we're in a very, very slight park. I mean, we're, it looks like a flat parking lot, but it's actually a slight, um, you know, deviation there because it's showing a 1% deviation. So it's very sensitive, I suppose. I can kind of, you know, now that I look at the parking lot, I can tell it's slightly not level, but, you know, before it just kind of seemed level to me. All right, scrolling down, this is your fuel economy. So you could get your average fuel economy real time while you're driving. And you have two of them, that way you can reset one and uh, keep the other one going. And also has a range on this particular one. Scrolling down again is your trip info. So this is a, your distance traveled, your average miles per gallon during that time. And then the actual time it took to travel those miles. And you have two of those, A and B, and you can reset those independently. Scrolling down again, this, this vehicle has the stop start feature. So if your seat belt's on and you're driving certain conditions are met it will turn the engine off while you're sitting at a stoplight or a stop sign for an extended period of time as soon as you let go of the uh the brake it'll start the engine back up and it'll you know continue on a lot of people have mixed feelings about that um, but it's this is for basically to keep the fuel economy miles as low as possible to meet government regulations it's not anything from what I understand, uh, customer demand is more about the government regulations. Okay, this is what your radio is doing. Stored messages will show up here, like time to change the oil, maybe even if you have a turn signal out. Screen setup, uh, this is where we can go in and change those things on the corner. So upper left, upper right, we can go to defaults. Uh, we can change the, the current gear, so let's go there. And let's turn that on so it'll show us uh, what gear we're in. All right, let's see odometer. We can turn that on or off if we want to. Going down goes back to your speedometer. Okay, so that's kind of a quick rundown of the screen just to give you an idea of what's in there and what it looks like looks really cool to me there's the push button start 
touch screen. So this one has the, the Uconnect system that is easy to use. It just looks really good as well. I mean, visually, uh, they did a, uh, Chrysler in general did a really good job with upgrading their screens. Um, they just, the clarity is there, the contrast, uh, the colors, everything just looks really good. Okay, so let's go here to, we'll start. So you see these icons at the bottom, they stay there and you can get uh, different information. So right now the first one is the radio. So you have your presets there at the top, AM, FM, satellite radio. It shows you, you know, like the album art and stuff like that and satellite radio. We can go into the audio here to change the balance and fade, equalizer, speed adjusted volume, all that stuff. It's pretty cool. All right, so we can go into the media source. So in addition to the radio, you have Bluetooth, auxiliary, USB 1, USB 2, and USB 3. So there's three different USB inputs. Um, and I'll show you where those are at, but uh, that's pretty cool. Because the USB is a very useful uh, and common outlet and also it's help you can charge devices with it too. So that's nice Climate control So you have a dual zone driver and passenger which you can change the temperatures here or below which I'll show you in a second and check it out It has a little Jeep. It's not a car. It's a little Jeep there um, For the recirculate the air. So I think that's pretty neat You can sync these of course also, let's go right here to heated seats, heated steering wheel, heated seats. You have a three-stage high, medium, and low for your driver and passenger. You control those there. You can also look at the backup camera, uh, even if you're not in reverse, which is cool. Now, the backup camera, I noticed that it is mu it's probably one of the most clearest, visually clear backup cameras that I've seen. It does have the active guidelines as well. They'll turn as I turn the steering wheel. You can see from the bumper up all the way to the sky and all around and of course it's a wide angle view and it's mounted in the very center position which you can really see that it's giving you really good visibility okay so let's close that out so you notice this little shortcut there in the climate control that we went into your fan speed is here and your front rear defroster air conditioning all those or on this screen you can go into your apps now this one has um, you know travel link has the navigation satellite rebel the, the satellite travel link has some really cool this is the coolest thing right here of course you can get the weather so let's check the weather here it's kind of, it says it's cloudy but it just got finished raining uh, fuel prices I like the way you can find the nearest gas station this is handy if you're out of town and you don't know where the nearest gas station is um, you can also find the the brand so like the particular brand that, of gas that you like to put on your in your vehicle or just the nearest one or the nearest one that the brand that you want or you can find the one with the cheapest price so and it has the date showing you know when that price was updated so uh, you know if you really want to get cheap gas or find out where the closest cheap gas station is um, you can you can do that as well this thing's pretty cool also if you have um, you know if you want premium diesel you can change the type of gas too travel link is really nice all right so let's continue here now all these different icons it's sort of like your cell phone in which you get to um you know change these around so right now let's say we wanted to take travel link and replace the navigation with that so we can just press and hold it and then move it down here and put it there. So now travel link will be there um, and navigation will not be. So if you use travel link more than navigation, that might be an option. And then you can always press and hold it navigation and put it back there if you want. Okay, so the next screen is controls. Now this is the screen we saw that it was a shortcut from the climate control over to the controls. Um, so that way, you know, you can go to it here or there or whatever. Next one is the navigation. Uh, you can put in a specific address, search addresses, search places, or you can view the map. 
and I like the way it has little Jeep there as the icon. Typically, I will have to change um, the icon to match the vehicle because it has a little triangle, but apparently either Jeep already did that or somebody here at the dealership did. So let me change it to night mode so you can see what that looks like. And there's day mode. All right, and then phone. This is where you pair your phone. Then you have access to recent calls, your contacts, a keypad, and you can pair, I think it's up to six phones, and they'll, they, you put them in a priority you know, system there. So it kind of gives you an idea of what the screen looks like, how to use it. It's very simple. The icons are there, and you just uh, click the one you want and choose the option you want. And, um, and he has the, the temperatures for that you have inside the vehicle, so you can um, you know, change those independently uh, with the buttons below, which I'll show you in a second. But uh, up here has a little storage space, he, little small ones, and then a, bit, a larger one here. It's kind of slanted. Speakers are flush mounted. These vents are really easy to, to use, just like the previous year models. Okay, so here's the climate control, the redundant buttons, um, which is good because that way you can control without having to change your screens. Let's say you want to be in a particular screen, you can um, just stay there and then just manipulate your climate right here. So your front and rear defrosters, heated seats, three stage, heated steering wheel, temperatures, your fan speed, ability to put on automatic or off, where you want the air to blow, and recirculate the air with a little Jeep <laughs> and the air conditioning. All that is right here in the center. Four-way flashers, you have a volume for your radio, tune through the stations for your radio. You can mute the radio. You can turn off your stop-start feature there. Uh, the traction control off button is here. Default will be on. Downhill descent, uh, this is kind of like a really slow speed, uh, off-road only um, type cruise control for keeping you really slow going downhill to keep you from slipping down the hill, uh, that kind of thing on a, on a slick, on loose gravel or slick slippery surfaces, that kind of thing. You can always turn the screen off if you just don't want it on. You can always tap the screen, it'll turn back on. 12 volt power supply and it's a uh, backlit illuminated. I'm going to try to do this this Jeep at night so you can see all the backlit buttons and everything. Here's your um, your window control. So you have one touch down, and you have to hold it to go back up. And so you have automatic on the front too, and then there's your rear too. Now it's kind of like a rubberized surface. There's a lot of rubberized surfaces, like this button right here is rubberized uh, for your, you know, you don't want the power windows to be used by kids. You can turn them off. Uh, the knobs have a little rubberized surface. Even this portion around the screen is kind of rubberized. Under this cover is the auxiliary input and USB ports. Now you notice it has the large USB port here and then you have the little mini uh, USB port there as well. Okay, so this is where your um, locking differential. So you have a front and rear locking differential, but you can lock both front and rear, or you can just lock the rear only if you'd like. Um, so that way you can maintain some steering. So if you want that that that's slipping to go on in your differential on the front, so that way you can um, not slip both wheels at the same time, and you can maintain some, you know, steering control on a really off-road situation. You can disconnect your sway bar here only if you're in four-wheel drive low or four-wheel drive high. And you have four auxiliary buttons. These will be for, you know, lighting or um, usually used use for like LED lightings, accent lightings, things like that, off-road type stuff. Okay, so there's your four-wheel drive um, control here. You have two-wheel two drive high, four-wheel drive high, and then you go to neutral, then you have the four-wheel drive low. Okay, here's the shifter. It has the Jeep on top. Pretty nice looking shifter. Put it in reverse. We saw the backup camera, which this one pops up. 
neutral, drive, and then you have the manual mode over here in which you can change uh, the gears up and down, like so. Cup holders, little space to in the center portion so you can put your cell phone or whatever, business cards, uh, that kind of thing. And this is all rubberized, has this rubber texture to it. Handbrake, parking brake with the contrast stitching. Armrest, soft to the touch, and it's quite soft. It goes in there, it doesn't I can't feel it bottoming bottoming out. It just gets more and more firm as I push down on it. Uh, and this lifts up in two positions. So the top button right here reveals this small pocket. And you can see it has that texture, the same texture as the inside of the roof and the handles. And wires can go in and out of this compartment in these little places here. And then the bottom lever lifts up the entire thing. And then you'll find a USB port and a open compartment and it has that same rubber thing there at the bottom um, it's not easily removable but you can remove it it's just I can't get my fingers underneath it right now oh there's a little place at the back a little tab there we go all right so yeah this is um that same texturing that I'm seeing everywhere right there it's just smooth plastic underneath it. So once you take it out, if you want to take it out to clean it and put it back in, you can clean under there as well fairly easily. Easily. So it has an auto dim rear view mirror with a little light sensor on the back. You have road side assistance and emergency um, assistance here, buttons right above it. And this little thing holding the mirror. Now the visors are a Kind of like a highly like a textured durable kind of like a polypropylene type material very interesting they have mirrors with lights in them that's nice little leds there on both sides has a little clip so you can clip your registration they extend out quite a ways and they also have the home link garage door opener controls on the other side you also have another clip here on this side as well Same thing on the passenger. Now the T-tops, the top two portions right here, they have a, uh, a sound deadening material like insulation right here. So that way there's not so much of an echo. And they are disconnected similarly from previously years. You have the latches here and here, there. Um, but, and you have the latches here, but you don't have those things to screw in. So it's a little bit easier to remove these and there's your dome light. Okay, so let's look at the visibility in the back. So right now I have the seats down. So to give you the best visibility. Um, so once your seats are up and you have passengers in them, then of course it's gonna change all this. But just, you know, looking out the glass, this is the, uh, the privacy glass. It's kind of a cloudy day, but you can still see out pretty good. Spare tire gets in the way a little bit, but of course it's a Wrangler, so that's to be expected. So that looks pretty good. Really like these roll cage. The roll cage, I like the way it's body colored on the outside and then black on the inside. So that way, you know, the, the roll cage doesn't distract you, but when you're driving around, everybody can see the body colored on the outside. That's pretty neat. Okay, so there you have it. I'm going to have um, more information in the description, specifications, um, as much information as I possibly can in the description. So you can look down there for more info information. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram here in Whiteville, North Carolina. And I'll see you guys next time. Let's take a look at the window sticker here. So this is the original window sticker for this particular vehicle. So you see it has the uh, 
basic information here at the top. Firecracker Red, 8-speed transmission, has a standard equipment. So this one has the 410 gear ratio. Interior features. Then it goes into your optional equipment. you notice these have prices. So these are added to the vehicle. And then you have a total price here. And it shows your warranty. VIN numbers here. Fuel economy ratings. Safety ratings haven't been published yet, apparently. And then the uh, parts content information. 60%. U.S. Canadian, 22% Mexico. So I guess the uh, the remaining is not really. Um, it's probably from all over the place. I'm not sure. Okay, so there's the window sticker, and so you can check it out, give you an idea of what the different packages cost, what built what build this particular vehicle was because a lot of people I'll, I'll say this a rubicon but they all some people think that's all the same but it, it's not really the same because of different option is available so it, there's very few vehicles that are exactly the same because the options are always a little bit different when you open the door even when your headlights are on automatic if the headlights are on it's gonna let you know so as long as you as soon as you open up the door now if you turn them all the way off off of automatic off of anything else then it won't alert you but even on automatic for some reason uh, it seems on this vehicle it seems to let you know that the lights are on 